my family owns a restaurant. Ooh. It's really good. Which restaurant? Ben and Mom, East 4th Street between 2nd and 1st. This is the whole thing. So I've been there like five times. Oh, it's thank so you. good. Thank you. And like all the sakes, it's so good. Thank you. Thank I think that so was much. you too. I'm putting the this sakes. all together. <laughs> yeah, and the, the soundtrack is on me. So you should come visit my restaurant. <laughs> it's, it's a <laughs> recommendation. Yeah. Then in on. <laughs> then in on. Like an East Village gem. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a true treasure of New York City. Welcome! Happy March, everybody! Happy Women's History Month! We are celebrating at Regarding with women and women and women. So many women. This is Regarding. We're a show about two POC. Recommending theater in NYC. My name is Ray Yamanochi. I'm a playwright. My name is Maria Paz Alegre. I am an artist and a theater critic. And we got two shows plus two shout outs. Uh, first show is If Pretty Hurts, Then Ugly Must Be a Motherfucker. And Mary Seacole, and coincidentally, we also have the playwright here with us, Jackie Sibless Jury. So stay tuned. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. If Pretty Hurts, Ugly Must Be a Motherfucker is at Playwrights Horizons, written by Tori Sampson and directed by Leah C. Gardiner. An African folktale meets a Destiny Child extravaganza. Beyonce going solo and all. This story of beauty, the lack thereof, and the damage that comes from being told you are less than. So I was blown away by this play. Yeah. I really loved it. Uh, there were so many different aspects. It was, by itself, it was a great play about these incredible girls, 18-year-olds uh, who are really coming of age and like going into their bodies and finding out who they are. But on top of that, there was there was this folktale element of like mysticism and history that not only was something that was believed by the characters of the play, but that actually, you know, in its way became palpable and it was like its own other character. In fact, there was actually another character, mm -hmm. the, uh, the cell phone. Uh, the cell phone man who, oh my gosh, he sang, he danced, he like, he brought everybody to their to their feet, to their knees. And it was like, it was just, it was an amazing time at the theater. Yeah, it had a very uh, folktale-like vibe to it, mm -hmm. um, which it sort of made everything, uh, all the crazy heightened theatrical elements of it, mm. and even the heightened narrative elements of it really work mm -hmm. in service of the larger theme of the play without being ham-fisted in any way. Yeah. Yeah, which I, it was so wonderful. And like you said, the theatricality of a lot of the things like the dance and the singing um, was just incredible. The singing? Yeah. Can we talk about the singing? Because while this is happening, the, the actors themselves did not sing. There was a lot of really amazing movement on stage. But um, being the voice of the river, and I feel that's not a spoiler because it is called in the cast, the voice of the river, Carla R. Stewart. Her mm. dulcet tones, my mm. god, they, yeah. they like transported me places. Yeah, and like there were live instruments, there were two mm -hmm. drummers uh, on the sides of the, the, or uh, the orchestra. And it really gave that element of reductively speaking or simplistically speaking like an ancient way of storytelling that it pushed mm -hmm. that element of folktale. I would know? say yes and it felt like like this is a live show. Yep. It was yep. it was part theater, right. part like concert, mm -hmm. you know, and I was I was in. Right, but that's what I mean. It mm -hmm. like it gave it that sort of old school feel, like an old way, like an old narrative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um you know, a, a, again, just pushing that element of folktale mm -hmm. um, in service of this larger theme. Right. And also the set design, Oof. which was really, really beautiful. Louisa Thompson, who actually it, now that I'm thinking about it recreated the Beyonce crazy in love, light bulbs, <laughs> like wind machine, like yes, yes. There yeah. was like simplicity to it, yeah. but it was effective. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, you know, especially in a show where there's multiple locations, mm -hmm. you know, you have this very bare, I guess, in a way. You know, minimalist. Minimalist, yeah, yeah. minimalist. Uh, and you know the acting really just carried the show. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, they were. Absolutely. I mean, they were. They were Destiny's child. They were tight. And then when Beyonce left, they were. Uh, they 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 held their own. The show runs till March thirty first. It's at Playwrights Horizons. 
Highly recommend it. Definitely go check it Definitely out. Definitely check it out. Mary C. Cole is at LCT3 at Lincoln Center. It's written by Jackie Silas Jury and directed by Liliana Blaine Cruz. Follow one of the most famous black doctors in history, Jamaican born and Britannia adopted Mary Seacole, as she journeys through time and space exposing the treatment of black caretakers, both historically and in present day. So this is very much a Jackie Silas Drury show. Mm. And but what I mean by that mm -hmm. is it's, you know, it's wild, but it's also intellectual and also incredibly accessible mm -hmm. all at the same time. It's also incredibly, incredibly unique. Yeah, I mean, I've seen like, I've seen time plays and like, I haven't seen anything like this. Mm -hmm. So what I really loved is, uh, it's sort of almost vignette -y. There are certain scenes mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. like jump time and you see scenes of uh, a modern caretaker and then the Mary Seacole back in the Crimean War. Mm -hmm. and, and some things they come back to and yes. some things they don't. Yeah. Yes, yes, and it's all tied down with this one character, uh, the mother, the mother mm. of Mary Seacole, and she's sort of like this timeless, like matriarchal figure who simultaneously haunts black and also dress, empowers black Mary Seacole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just this figure. Yeah, this figure, with very imposing, mm. um, and which is grounds the whole play. And as the play continues to move forward, like things start to change, shift, become weird, become mm -hmm. haunting, and then it just explodes. Yeah. It just explodes. Oh, God. It was so, I, mm -hmm. this is, a, a, I think, a very good sign about plays. I could not stop thinking about this production. Yeah. It was a couple weeks since we've seen it, and I still haven't been able to get it mm -hmm. out of my head. Every day, there's something new that I think about. And something that did not affect me as much what, when we saw the play, but in thinking about it after, I'm Filipino, and a lot of us got citizenship and entry into this country through healthcare because there's a huge healthcare crisis here because of the lack of caretakers. And in our culture, uh, caretaking is part of our culture. So that's why we have the people and that's what is wanted here. And so this is something that I, I know about. I have family members that do this. And then on top of that, to, to see accurately mm -hmm. how they love us when they bring us in, but then when we are in charge, they hate us mm -hmm. and order us around. And so it's it's very telling, but, to, but told very well mm -hmm. and very truthfully. And I really appreciated that. I was yeah. like, you nailed it. And I, I also have to say, like other uh, Jackie Silas Drew plays, it's challenging. You know, it's mm. not it's it's not one of those things where you can just sit back and let it wash over you. Mm. You have to sort of give the play as much as it's giving you. Mm. You have to sort of meet it in the middle. Mm -hmm. But if you do, the payoff is extraordinary. Oof, that payoff. Because mm -hmm. I, I will say that there were moments where it was so. It, it, there was so much. I'm just like, it, it took me a minute, and I'm like, I'm a little yeah. confused. I'm right, not. Right. I'm not entirely right. sure how this fits with this or mm -hmm. what this is that. But then, like, yeah, yep. like life is confusing. You yep. get confused. It's not linear because life is not linear, and so. You and know, it has a lot to do with memory and time yeah. and history, which and hits so, you yes, throughout the day. Right. And so, like, right. yeah, very fragmented. Fucking dope ass play. Well, it's at LCT three at Lincoln Center. It mm. goes till March twenty fourth. Definitely check that shit out. It's so good. Bonus material. There are some plays that we wanted to see but we were not able to see and so now is our time to recommend to you some things that we're gonna go see. So one show that we didn't get to see but I am dying to see it is Daddy by Jeremy O'Harris. We both saw Slave Play and I was blown away by it. I have not been able to stop talking about that. So he's now doing something called Daddy. It's co-produced by Vineyard Theatre and the new group. It's at the Signature Theatre and I will see everything that this man writes for the rest of his life. He is intellectual, he is powerful, and he just, oh, he can twist that knife. It made me a lot, a lot of feelings. So yes, definitely check it out. So I'm really excited about this play called Hate Fuck by Rahana Lumerza. It's directed by Adrian Campbell Holt and it's at uh, Women's Project Theatre uh, on the Upper West Side. Uh, it's a two-hander that deals with Muslim identity and the stereotypes of that and how that's sort of used in mm. art media and it might be a subtweet. So 
Definitely looking forward to that. That's the tea. <laughs> oh, that's piping. <laughs> yeah. Just burn. New York is gray, but Queens is sunny because we have in studio writer Jackie Simplis Jury. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, thank you for coming on to Regarding. Welcome to our Welcome. amazing, so huge studio. Absolutely. <laughs> so much space. Yes. Yeah. So, you have a show currently running at Lincoln Center, LCT3, yes. called Mary Seacole. True. How long have you been like thinking about this play? Where was sort of the impetus of writing it? I, I guess I've been thinking of it for a while. Like, I, I, I first um, like got a commission to write the play, like, four or five years ago mm. and um, started like r like read the autobiography then and was like for a, a long time trying to figure out how to turn it into a play because it's like this like Victorian-ish like um, like someone writing about themselves so there's only one voice mm -hmm. and so I like I was interested in her story but I couldn't figure out how to make it a play and not just like an interesting historical monologue right um, mm. and so it's it's and so like it was sort of once like trying to introduce more contemporary women that it became more of an actual play rather than just like notes right. for a long time. Can I ask with the uh, with the jumps in time period like what was your what was your like research or preparation for that just in, in being able to go through all those different times? Oh yeah, it was like all the historical stuff was like. Um, like reading, <laughs> like reading this autobiography and reading about mm -hmm. the Crimean War and sort of reading about, um, like reading letters that Florence Nightingale wrote to her brother about Mary Seacole and like reading all this stuff. Rejection letters, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then he also, she also like, oh. yeah, said some nasty things to yeah. her family about her. But it's cool. <laughs> um, it's everyone says nasty things about everyone else all the time, That's true. including like nurses in the 1850s. They were just Twitter beefing. Yeah, ah! Twitter. <laughs> like slow mo yeah. Twitter beef. But I love don't it. Don't you don't you subtweet me, bitch. <laughs> don't you subtweet me. <laughs> like a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and but then like with the more contemporary stuff, it's like some of it um, definitely comes from like uh, listening to women in my family. Some mm -hmm. of it comes from observing women in New York City. I spend a lot of time in parks feeling a little mm -hmm. bit like a child molester. Like being like, at right. playgrounds without children and like having people be like, wait, why are, are you, <laughs> are you here to kidnap someone? And I was like, I'm just listening to what you're yeah. saying and writing it down, that's not creepy. Yeah, yeah. that's not weird. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Um, but yeah, and like, um, like that, that, that's, <laughs> but, you, but you'll know what that means if you see the play. Because yeah. uh, we, we got to see it yesterday, and mm. now that you bring it up, I'm like, oh, I see how it all connects now. So It sits with that. you. Yeah. I'm, I, and I mean this as a highest compliment. You know, when like there's, there's so many pieces of theater that you can just kind of like, wait, what did we see? What was it about? Who was in it? But like yeah. yours has been, like, it's just been ruminating and just, you know, simmering in my mind. I, I really loved it. Oh, that's really kind. No, you're, yeah. thank, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you for that. It's been, a, it was a really good room. Like the, um, I feel like with everyone, like with Liliana who directed it, mm -hmm. and all of the actors, like and the designers, we've been like sitting in previews and in tech and in rehearsals, like kind of like figuring out how things weave together. And mm -hmm. it's, it's been like really super collaborative and really generous in a way that like things often aren't. Like people say that things are gonna be collaborative. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, then like, and then it's like, yeah, but like do what I want you to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And this has been a lot of give and take and it's been really great. So, <laughs> from a 2014 New York Times piece, uh, Kirk Columbus, the Trinity Rep Artistic Director, yeah. has quoted a saying with you, I joked with Jackie, can your next play be a family drama around the kitchen table? And she said, under no circumstance. And then five years later, you wrote Fairview, or rather, that came out. <laughs> and that is not necessarily a kitchen drama, that it, but is ostensibly right. a kitchen comedy or sitcom. Also, that's going up at New York Theater, uh, theater for a New Audience. Yes, Tifana. In the summer, Tefana in the summer, summer which we have to mention. In right. Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Hi. So go check that out. <laughs> what was the impetus for, for, for Fairview? I just wanted to mess with Kirk Columbus. There you go. I'm just kidding. 
heard that? You heard that? <laughs> yeah. I'm coming we are now. We gotta tag Kirk Columbus right now. <laughs> yeah. See what you did? <laughs> so you'd be like, what did I do yeah. to you? I haven't done anything bad. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny, I like forgot about that uh -huh. quote. And I was like, oh. Well, that maybe, was, yeah, yeah. maybe if you can talk about like what your mentality was then, and then five years later, like how that shifted, or not necessarily shifted, but I guess what changed in you where you were like, you know what, perhaps I will revisit this sort of thing. Part of the reason that I was a little bit late mm -hmm. <laughs> coming here was because I was um, having a uh, set design meeting with Mimi Lian and Sarah Benson. Oh, oh dope, dope, dope. And um, mm -hmm. like they, before any text of that play or before like the idea of it even existed, it was like I knew that I wanted to work with Sarah and I wanted to work with Mimi mm -hmm. and that like they also wanted to work with each other. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> and so um, it's like it's when we were having our earliest discussions about the play, it was like this idea of surveillance and race and like people watching people mm. and um, how like eventually like how implicit bias changes the way that you um, watch someone's behavior and judge it but like um, and so we were sort of we like Sarah and I were doing all kinds we were reading all this stuff we were watching police interrogation videos for a while and like watching oh, like shit, interrogation yeah. tactics right. and like it, it, it wasn't until um, and so for actually for like a full year and a half that play was like um, the whole middle of it was like this like weird office drama where these like People worked in like uh, like a version of this NSA sort of mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. like and they were like listen and like we didn't know what they were listening to but we we're like there's like a panopticon and they're mm -hmm. like they're just it's like the office set inside of a police state mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like they're like weird and dead inside right and then that became like less and less <laughs> interesting <laughs> and, and so it wasn't until um, figuring out that um, it was like really this this one book. Um, that Sarah and Mimi and I read by this woman named Simone Brown, Dark Matters. Um, and it's about like uh, surveillance and black bodies in space mm. through time. Mm. And so there was something about that, that where it really clicked in that we needed to show something very normal and then show it be disrupted, mm -hmm. being disrupted by people who were watching and judging it. And so like mm. the idea of like, this is such a long answer, but like figuring out what felt normal in a theater was like, something that was like naturalistic slash sitcom-ish. Mm -hmm. And like that's how that came about. And it's like it. completely random way. Got it. Um, like after like all of this other like weird like theoretical got architecture was got like it, put it. up. And so it was like the um, the play of the beginning of the play mm -hmm. <laughs> um, was like one of the last pieces of it to come into place. Mm. It was weird. So that's how that happened, kind of. Got it. it was, it's, it's super circuitous. Yeah. But it all, I guess, it's one of those things, I never do it, and then you just find yourself there. No, and mm -hmm. it was like, for everyone in the process, it was like, so, like Mimi had never designed a set with a couch on it before. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Like she's like not, like she does these like crazy yeah, huge yeah, yeah. architectural things, so she was like, I looked at this Samuel French ground clearance <laughs> and like yeah. that felt really weird uh -huh. and it was like everything like right. that like I never wanted to do right. and like huh. Sarah Benson had never really directed like naturalism before mm -hmm. or mm. and so she was like it's like melodrama but turned down I guess right. <laughs> she was like I don't really know how to do this uh -huh. and like I I like put in all of these and it, like I know that you know like there are certain things that are like new play mm -hmm. languagey things or like um oh, a phone call is happening mm -hmm. and it's going to give me exposition that I'm mm -hmm. now going to d like deliver right, to the right. audience. Like all right, these right. like cringy uh -huh. things. Uh -huh. And so we're all like, and the actors were like, I'm not in plays like this normally. Right, this right. is so weird. Uh -huh. And so like everyone had their own, like everything that I ran away from in grad school, I'm now doing in this play, mm. in the services of something else, mm -hmm, so I'm mm -hmm, able to do it. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it was a really weird process. That's yeah. awesome, fascinating. Yeah. fascinating. Now swim in it, <laughs> go, lean in. So if you were to give advice to your younger self or mm. possibly aspiring artists, playwrights who might be watching this program, would you have any advice for them? If I were to give advice to my younger self, I would say stop acting. Oh my god. <laughs> You're so bad at it. <laughs> okay. 
Um, and also like, or I guess conversely, like keep acting uh -huh. just because you're uh, taller than the boys and <laughs> like don't have a good sassy black woman voice uh -huh. doesn't mean you won't have a career. Uh -huh. um, I guess, but like in terms of like advice, like if you think something is bad, it is. Like, I feel like that's like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like in every way, like if you're like, oh, this feels sketchy, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, trust like your inner voice and mm -hmm. like it can, like you can still make things better. Like if you think that your writing is bad, it might be, but it, that doesn't mean it's gonna be bad forever. Mm. Um, but like, trust your, trust, have, like give um, your inner critic some credit and like give your like aesthetic, like, isn't there something, this is so <laughs> cheesy, but uh, isn't there's like a thing where it's like your sense of like artistic aesthetic mm -hmm. develops before your ability to do yes. that thing? Yes, yes, that like, is, there's like I can't a believe, thing. No, I know, I can't believe you actually brought that up because I was literally thinking that before you said it. You know? Yeah, and the, the Ira Glass had a, a thing yes, about that. Yes, yeah. that's who it was. Oh, I'm quoting Ira Glass. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Recommendation. <laughs> so if you have anything you'd like to recommend, this is a recommendation show, anything at all. Okay. I, I feel like I have like a bunch of recommendations go, and I'm not go, sure which one fine. is the right go one. Go all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my first recommendation is um, to buy fancy bread and slice it and put it in the freezer Ooh. because it makes your weeknight dinners more special. Oh, that's a great idea. Like get a baguette. Uh -huh. Slice it up, yeah. uh -huh. then you just you just put it in the toaster, uh -huh. and then it, it can turn like just like some roasted vegetables and an egg into a beautiful French experience. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. Am I in it's Paris? Like, well, yeah, buy like four baguettes at once. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially Ooh. if they're on sale. Uh -huh. That's brilliant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So that's like one real okay. recommendation. Great. Great. And then I feel like the other one that I have is from Taking the Car Here, which is three. So Hot 97 on Friday night <laughs> is like a joy. Yeah. Uh -huh. We had like a little bit of like, there was some Ja Rule. Wow. There was, like there were like kick, like it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. So back. Um, mm -hmm. like um, times a million. Uh -huh. mm. There was like, I never knew there was a love like this before. Uh -huh. That one, what's your zodiac sign? That guy, um, his marquee. It was wow. like, I, I was like, oh, like I forgot about these. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. like my middle school uh -huh. dance mm -hmm. uh -huh. come to dance. like the radio. So wow. like, listen to the radio. Yeah. Um, and go to the Queens Museum. Yeah. It's a Queen wonderful museum. museum. You're right across the street from Flushing Corona Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful a lovely, park. beautiful park. There are beautiful families. There are different events. Mm -hmm. Go to museums not in Manhattan. They are yes. wonderful and worth visiting. Those are my recommendations. Those are amazing. That's dope. Those are amazing yeah. recommendations. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you for being on the show. Thank you so much for coming on to our Yay. show. I mean, thank yeah. you so much, Jackie Sidless Jury. That was a heck of an interview. I want to be best friends with you, <laughs> like in real life. Well, really, really. Uh, yeah, we've already said it but before, but you know, go check out our show, Mary Seacole, it's at LCT3 at Lincoln Center. It runs till March 24th, so don't miss it. Mm -hmm. Make a right at the fountain and you're going the right way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Way to go, girl. And make sure you check out an extended interview over here, over here, at over here. At our beautiful here. website. Beautiful website. Beautiful. Absolutely we beautiful. We got blogs, we got recommendations. Mm. We pay Squarespace every month for it, so please. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah. like and, and subscribe, subscribe so that we can monetize. Mm -hmm. and, you know, please. keep these lights on. This is a labor of love, but we need a little bit let's of. Let's make it a labor of cash, it. shall we? I want to keep stream. this going, and if you like it, you know, we can bring you more content. But we can only do that if we get more support. So Don't you want more Asian in your life? Said everyone ever. <laughs> Just saying. Sure. Just saying. Have a good month. See you next time. Bye.